Jerry told us about his history with this very same lake. It's, it's kind of similar to uh, Kelly's. I mean, I started coming up here, it's been 30 years, I hate to admit that, but uh, yeah, 30 years ago, my grandparents built a cabin up here. And um, so West, West Twin Lake in the Lewiston area really holds special memories uh, for me. So it was pretty neat to be able to do the show here and uh, kind of uh, show everybody what the lake's got to offer here. I mean, you know, it's not a fantastic fishing lake, but you know, it's a good, good typical Northern Michigan bass lake that's got both large mouth and small mouth in it, so. Not a giant, nice. but good keeper, Smalley. Real nice fish. Jerry tried another topwater bait, but realized quickly it was time to switch to spinning gear. But first, he explained what the bait casting gear had done for us so far. We caught a couple nice smallmouth uh, just on uh, spinner bait. You know, this is nothing, nothing fancy, just a, one that looks like a minnow here. But I like to throw these on bait casting gear. Um, you know, this is a Fluger President all-star combo. Just uh, six and a half foot, you know, medium, medium heavy, like 12 pound test. I don't like to overdo it on the line, but uh, it's hard to throw these uh, bigger spinner baits on, on spinning gear. You know, they're just not, these big spinner baits are not made to be thrown on, on the spinning stuff, you know. The next technique would be using a spinning reel to pitch and skip under docks for big largemouth. Well, I've just got a little Texas rig tube. You know, I really don't think the bait's so much important. A lot of these fish, have, you know, they don't get fished for at all up here. Um, so they're, they're actually pretty easy to catch if you can find their location. Just a simple Texas rig tube. I got like a little 16th ounce head on there, nothing real heavy. I mean, we're only fishing a couple feet of water. Um, probably one of the most important things when you're skipping under boat docks, though, is I like to use a spinning reel so I can kind of shoot that thing and make it skip just like you're skipping a stone. Um, and I like to use a little bit shorter rod than I normally would for a tube because you're in tight quarters, you know, um, you're, you know, you're making short casts. So if you got a seven foot or a seven and a half foot rod, it's just not real pra practical for doing this. So this one's just six and a half feet. Man, I'm having fun. <laughs> Got him. Wow. That's a good one. That's a toad. Look at how he was hooked. Watch this. <laughs> nice oh, fish. Oh man, right from underneath that dock, just like you were saying. Cool. Nice one. Fat one, man. That guy's got something in there. Feel that. Feel that belly. There's. <laughs> Good job. Nice job. This technique is known for pulling the big boys out from under the docks, and it works on most lakes. Just be sure to be respectful of boat owners who don't always know why you're casting so close to their pontoons. If I got a pontoon, I think I'd name it Bass Cover. Summertime in inland lakes in Michigan, the docks are always good places to start. And then after that, like the shallow, visible cover, I mean, that's the stuff that gets hit the most by people because everybody can see it. We caught some fish today on the gravel beds and a lot of the maps that, uh, that are available for these lakes, like actually on my, on my Lawrence thing right here, it, it'll tell you like where those gravel bars are at. And you know, we caught a couple um, also in those deeper weeds too. So, um, but that stuff you can find on the map. almost a five pounder right there. Wow, look at that fish. Look at that. Beautiful. That's one of the biggest large mouths I've caught on this lake too. Look at that sucker. Gorgeous. Big fat belly on him. Look at his tail from the spawning too. I mean that's an old scar but see how it's worn off there. Gorgeous. And look where he came from right here. Two feet of water with like nothing around it. When you've had your fill of dock fishing for largemouth, you can always take the bait caster back out to deeper water. 
On this lake, there's only one deep hole, and this time of year, that's where the smallmouth can be found. They range in size from dink to hog, but every smallie is a fun one to catch. Nice three pounder. Let's crush that spinner bait. Good one. So a fishing guide, when you get a day off, you go fishing? <laughs> this is relaxing, you know, kind of uh, getting to fish for myself and, and don't have to take care of people and that, uh, that to me is a nice relaxing day out here. Most of the work that I do is down on Lake St. Clair and Lake Erie area, but uh, occasionally I'll get some clients that want to come up to uh, northern Michigan here and fish some of the smallmouth lakes up in this area, but most of the time I'm down near the Detroit area on St. Clair. Thanks to Jerry for coming up here and having a ball with us. We caught more fish than we had time to show using lots of different techniques. And we hope Jerry's tips will help you know where to start when fishing a northern Michigan lake for bass. Whether you have lots of fishing memories from childhood or you're just starting to create some, may your fishing roots always remain dear to your heart here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Tell those bass to get on the hook.